Hello and welcome to Center Ice Card Cast, your one-stop podcast shop for all things hockey cards. My name is Eric Andrews, also known in the hobby as Hammerhawks, and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow hobbyist Aaron Goldstein, better known in the hobby as Crease Collector. So obviously we don't do live episodes very often, as you guys know, but in my opinion, this is a pretty worthy exception. Um, this is an episode that I had always hoped could happen one day, and uh, that day is finally here. And as I mentioned in episode 53, one product that I've always loved and thought would be really, really fun to open is 2003 Tops Pristine. And being such an old product and one that was pretty limited, and I'll get into the numbers on that a little bit later, um, it's obviously incredibly difficult to find sealed boxes of this stuff 18 years after the fact. Um, so just kind of explaining a little bit about that. Why do I like it so much? Um, in my opinion, this product is arguably one of the nicest looking hockey products ever produced. Um, you know, obviously that's a bold statement and there are a lot of other ones that could, you know, kind of fall into that category. Um, you know, Tops Gold Label is another one that immediately comes to mind. And obviously there's quite a few other ones as well. Um, you know, but as you will see, pretty much every single card in this product is just incredibly beautiful, you know, from the base cards, the memorabilia cards to the rarest of parallels, whatever it might be, it looks really nice. Um, you know, this product has a pretty classy look and feel to it, you know, if you guys have not seen the cards before, um, and then it kind of combines, you know, just the actual design, it combines that with that classic tops chrome look, and then also adds in all of those refractors as well across the board, pretty much with every card and insert and stuff in the product, there's refractor versions as well. So, um, you know, it obviously just creates a special product in that regard. And then, of course, like every good product, you know, you hope that there's a good rookie class and there are a few good rookies in the product. Um, you know, and of course, this is no exception with it being 0304. You have Marc Andre Fleury and Patrice Bergeron in the product. Um, you know, so those are two guys that I think everyone would say are surefire Hockey Hall of Famers. So having them in the rookie class is obviously a big draw to the product as well. Um, so just combining all of those things makes it a pretty special product and something that's pretty easy to fall in love with. So um, just giving a little background on, um, you know, kind of my hope to get a box of it. Uh, since we started the podcast back in 2020, I believe that there have been, I want to say two or maybe three of these boxes that have surfaced on eBay during that time. Um, and I've tried to get each one of them, but they ended up selling for a lot more than I thought they would. And just was more than I was willing to pay, um, you know, especially at that time. So, you know, and just kind of didn't think much of it, thought, you know, okay, if it never happens, whatever, not a big deal. Well, then fast forward to last month, and I came across a comment on a post on Facebook where someone actually had this, just this massive stash of old boxes um, that they were selling for a friend of theirs. And among the boxes that he had posted on this, you know, Facebook post, um, he posted a picture that showed six boxes of 0304 tops for Steam. So, of course, that immediately got my attention, and I sent the guy a message, and uh, we were able to work out a price for five boxes. He originally had six, but he had already sold one of those six boxes in the time that we were talking. Um, so I was only able to get five of them, which, I mean, still, you know, given the product, how old it is, how rare it is, is, you know, pretty much unheard of at this point. So... Um, you know, that was awesome, but of course there has to be a but to the story, right? Um, there was a minor issue, that being that he was only willing to hand off the boxes in person and he lived outside of the Toronto area. So me being in the U.S., that was kind of a problem. Well, cue our good buddy, Josh Packham, and Josh, I know you're listening right now. Uh, he came in super clutch by being willing to make a 30-minute drive to meet up with the guy to complete the deal on my behalf in person. Um, and then, of course, mailed them to me after the fact. So, Josh, I know I said it last time, but this obviously wouldn't have been possible without you. So, again, thank you so much. And I truly hope that you enjoy watching this. And uh, here's hoping that I pull a really nice Nathan Horton card, maybe even a printing plate for you in your PC. Um, so just before getting started with the break, I want to walk through the product a little bit more in depth. So you guys kind of know a little bit better of what to expect with the product since it is kind of a, a product that not a lot of people are familiar with. You know, obviously being an old product and just one that was only done once, you know, it, it's not something that most people are familiar with, especially this far after the fact. So just to provide some basic info about the product, it was released in early 2004, and it was actually a pretty high-end product at the time. I believe it retailed for around 150 US, 
um, you know, which obviously, like I said, at the time, that was a pretty high end product, given that a lot of products for a hobby box were probably not like 40, 50, 60 US range. So 150 was a pretty substantial amount of money for a hobby box at that time. And that wasn't very common. Um, you know, of course, there were some products that were more expensive, you know, things like Premier Collection from Upper Deck and, you know, Be a Player Ultimate Memorabilia and Signature Series from in the game, you know, things like that. Parkhurst Rookie from that specific year, that was an expensive one as well. Um, you know, but again, that just wasn't the norm for there to be all those super expensive products, um, you know, like how it is today, obviously. But, um, you know, those were kind of the years where these higher end products were first starting to come out, at least in the hockey card hobby. So, um, you know, this was probably Topps' highest end product um, that they released um, probably ever for hockey, honestly, um, certainly for this year, at least. Um, and like I said, 2003-04 was the one and only year that Topps did make pristine for hockey. It had been made in other sports for multiple years and continued on after the fact in those other sports. But with Topps losing its NHL license after the 0304 season, of course, this ended up being the only time that the product was, in fact, made for hockey. So that's just kind of a, an interesting little thing to note there with the product, too. You know, it, it was ultimately a one-off product. And, you know, that makes it unique in and of itself. But the thing that really makes Topps for Steam unique is the configuration of the box. As you guys will see, it was extremely unique and innovative. Um, you know, I'm not wildly familiar with other sports and the, and the products that have come out for other sports over the years, but I'm pretty confident that this is the only time this was ever done for a hockey product. If you guys know of a, a different product where this was done, let me know because I would love to hear about it. But, um, you know, essentially what they did is, you know, for context, obviously, we're used to just packs in a box, and that's still true for this product. That's true for pretty much every product used to opening up a pack that comes in a box makes sense but it's a lot more than that with this product what they did and you'll i'll show you the box actually see if you guys can see um it says try packs so what that means is it's actually a pack inside of a pack inside of a pack and you'll see exactly what that means when i get to opening the box um, you know, and that's why I wanted to do this on camera so that you guys can actually kind of see what that actually looks like. But to explain the concept a little bit, the first quote unquote outer pack holds one uncirculated card, um, you know, which they just had like, and they're not really one touch holders, but they're kind of just like a plastic case that they sealed with a, a top sticker. Um, so the first pack has one uncirculated card plus another pack of cards inside of it. That second pack, holds one relic card plus another pack. That third pack then has the veteran base cards and the rookie cards um, and the autograph cards would be inside of those packs as well. Those are one per box. Um, and then within one complete box, so within one of the five tri packs, there is a fourth pack inside the third pack. And that fourth pack holds one of the mini cards. Um, so it's just a very unique you know, configuration, you just don't see that. It's really, you know, just intriguing. That's one of the big things that I'm looking forward to with this box break is just seeing what that actually looks like and kind of what it's like to open a pack and then take out another pack. So that should be really cool. Um, you know, and then one other thing, I'm not entirely sure if this is accurate, but I'm pretty sure it is. I believe that each box comes with a box topper that has one of the gold refractor cards. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure about that because I, I found this promotional booklet about the product um, that I got a lot of this information from, and it made it sound like that was the case that they were inserted as box toppers in each box, but it didn't specifically state that. So I can't say for absolute certainty before opening the box, that's true, but it seems like that's true. Um, you know, and I hope that's the case because in my opinion, as you guys heard on the last episode, those gold refractor cards are among the nicest hockey parallels ever made. So, um, you know, hopefully having an opportunity to pull one would be amazing. Um, so just following up on that part too, if you crunch some of the numbers about the print runs and everything, um, it's, it does seem 
accurate as though you would get a gold refractor one per box like that booklet implies. If you take um, the, the whole product, base cards and the rookie cards, there's 190 cards within the base set, including the short prints. And each of those cards has a gold refractor number out of 33. So if you take the 190 times 33, that equates to 6,270. So just keep that number in mind, 6,270. Let's assume that the gold refractors are one per box. So there will be 6,270 boxes produced. Um, if that is the case, that obviously speaks to how limited the product really is. You know, it wasn't a promotional product. It wasn't, you know, anything like that. It was a mainstream product. So for that low of a total box count, um, you know, that, that goes to show you how, how rare this stuff was, even at the time of release and especially now. So, um, you know, and then taking that count that also kind of matches up not only with the quantity, but also the odds of, you know, a lot of the numbered cards in the product. So I feel like that box count and the, the gold refractor being one per box does seem to match up. So I'm, I'm going to roll with that and uh, hopefully that's accurate. We'll find out. Um, but with that context of the product, kind of understanding a little bit more about the product as a whole, I wanted to walk through a little bit about what is actually within the product itself. So the base set of veterans consists of 100 cards. Those are four per pack, which would be in the third pack of each tri-pack. Um, with five tri-packs per box, that would be 20 base cards per box. So again, if we're using that 6270 box count, that would equate to the base cards having a print run of roughly 1,250, which again, for base cards, that's pretty limited in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, obviously things like the cup now are 249 and stuff like that. But, um, you know, for a product back then, that was pretty limited. You know, you're, you're used to tens and tens of thousands of copies of every base card. So something that limited was also pretty unique and, and uh, just not something you saw every day. Um, and then some of you guys are probably familiar with how the rookie cards work, but they are a little bit confusing. There are 30 different rookies that were included in the product, but then each of those 30 rookies has three different quote unquote levels of cards within the set. So there are the common cards, which are the true rookie cards, so to speak. Those are numbered out of 1199. Um, here's the Marc Andre Fleury one, for example, just so you guys can see it. Um, like I said, just beautiful cards. They just look phenomenal. And seeing these on a screen really don't do them any justice. Like I said, they have that really sweet tops chrome look and feel to them. So just really awesome cards there. So those are kind of like the, the quote unquote, like base true rookies. Um, and this is what the veteran base cards look like as well, as you guys will see in a minute. Um, so those are the, the normal quote unquote rookies. They're called common rookies. And then there are the uncommon rookie cards, which those are numbered out of 699 and have a different design. And then there are rare rookie cards, which are numbered out of 199 and again have a different design. So there are essentially 90 different rookie cards, even though those 90 cards are just of those same 30 players that comprise that checklist. So just kind of an interesting, you know, little tidbit there that again, something you don't see super often with players having multiple cards within, um, you know, a checklist and um, just kind of how they did that was a little, a little unique, especially at that time. So, and then, like I said earlier, all of those 190 cards, the veterans and all of the versions of the rookie cards have refractor and gold refractor parallels. So starting with the simple one, every gold refractor is numbered out of 33. doesn't matter if it's veteran, common, uncommon, rare, they're all numbered out of 33. Easy, simple to remember. And again, those are just beautiful cards. I know I talked about it a lot on the last episode and have shown it off before, but the gold refractors are just spectacular looking cards. Um, definitely among the, the more underrated cards in the hobby, I would say. So get those out of the way. Those are easy to understand. And if you jump to the normal refractors, those are a little bit different. Um, all of the veteran base refractors are all numbered out of 59. And then for the rookies, again, kind of like how the base versions work, it's a little bit different based on what version of the card it is. So the common refractors, which again, look like the base card, those are numbered out of 499. Here's the flurry, just a beautiful card. Again, just mimics that same base basic design, but obviously with the refractor finish looks really nice. 
And then jumping onto the uncommon rookie refractors, those are numbered out of 199 and the rare rookie refractors are numbered out 59. So that's how the refractors work. And then for each of the 190 cards in that base set, uh, those also have all four printing plates inserted into the product as well. So, you know, those are nice little chase cards, so to speak. Um, so if you're taking that 6270 total box count that I referenced earlier, and you do the math of 190 times four plates for each player, for each card, uh, that's 760 total printing plates. So that would equate to a printing plate falling roughly one in every eight boxes or so, uh, you know, if that total box count is correct. So just something to kind of keep in mind there. Um, and then I mentioned earlier, those mini cards that are one per box. There are 40 players on that checklist. So it's, it's not quite the full checklist of the base or even the rookies. Um, you know, it kind of focuses more on more prominent players. Um, you know, the one that, of course, I would be looking for would be the Marc-Andre Fleury. There are a few other rookies, but it seems like it's mostly veterans, um, probably like three quarters of veterans, I would say. So um, it'll be cool to get one of those for sure. And then moving on to the relics, there are a few different types of memorabilia inserts in the product. Uh, the first one being the pristine portions jersey cards. There are 35 players on that checklist, which are broken down into two groupings for the odds. Um, but the biggest name unquestionably on the whole checklist is Patrick Waugh. So that would obviously be a really good one to get for sure. Um, and those pristine portion Jersey cards have refractor versions that are numbered out of 25. I've never had one of those on hand, but I'm sure they look really nice. Um, so that'd be cool to get one of those. And then the pristine portions also have stick cards. And that's a smaller checklist of only 12 players. It's not the same checklist at all. Um, it's just a completely different group of players. I'm sure some guys do have both, but um, within that checklist of 12 players, there are guys like Mark Messier, Steve Eiserman. So there's some pretty good names in there. And again, with those pristine portion stick cards, there are also refractor versions of those, which are numbered out of 10. So I'm sure those are really nice looking cards, especially if you get a really nice stick piece. Um, and then turning to one of the more you know, interesting memorabilia cards, in my opinion, being the pristine patches. Um, obviously those are patch cards and all of those for the basic versions are numbered out of 50. There are 41 players on that checklist. So obviously a little bit more expansive of a checklist, some good names sp sprinkled throughout, but again, Patrick Waugh is on that list. So that's probably the most notable one for sure. Um, and again, those also have refractor parallels, which are also numbered out of 10. So that would obviously be a really nice card to get. If I somehow got the Waugh, that would be awesome. But any patch, any refractor patch would be amazing. Um, so taking those, Pristine patches, whether it be the, you know, the, the basic version or refractor version, you know, totaling up that print run using that total box count, the odds for pulling the pristine patches, you get one about 40% of the time. So I'm hopeful that we get a patch, but we'll see. And then um, finally, for a memorabilia, there are also the popular demand relic cards. And that's a 25 player checklist, including names like Mario Lemieux, Yarmir Yager, Pavel Bure, Paul Correa. Um, pretty decent you know, assortment of names there. Um, I would say that's probably the nicest looking memorabilia set, just in my opinion, I just like the design of it. Um, and again, like everything else, that insert set also has refractors. Um, what's kind of interesting about these ones specifically is some of them are numbered out of 25, where some of them are short printed numbered out of 10. It just kind of depends on the player. And those cards are just beautiful in person, the popular demand uh, refractor cards. I used to own one of the Paul Korea ones out of 10, and it was just like, just phenomenally, just beautiful card, like just amazing. Um, and the one that I had uh, actually had a piece of the, um, if you guys are familiar with like game worn jerseys, a lot of the time, especially back then, they would stamp in uh, kind of just like with a paint almost like a fabric paint, um, this set of the jersey, um, you know, like most, most teams go through two, three, four sets of jerseys throughout a season. So they would put in each jersey, you know, oh, this is set two, which means it was worn in the middle of the season. So uh, the piece on that Korea card actually came from that set tag in the jersey, which just made it even cooler. You know, it'd be cool if it was just a normal jersey piece, but having something really unique like that obviously made it way cooler. So 
those are the memorabilia inserts. And hopefully I'm not boring you guys, just trying to give you as much information and document this product as best as possible. Because like I said last time, if you guys try to find videos and information about Tops 15, you're just not going to find it. So I'm trying to incorporate everything into this episode and, and do the product that's full justice. So just, you know, apologize for the length, the intro and everything, but just trying to do its, its justice and, um, you know, go through it pretty thoroughly. So uh, getting toward the end here, but for the autographs, then uh, those are one per box. Like I said earlier, there's only one uh, autograph insert set and there are only seven guys on that checklist. So, you know, your odds of getting any specific guy are actually fairly decent, you know, compared to if you're trying to get a certain memorabilia card or something, for example. Um, so that checklist, I'll just read them off since there's only seven guys. Uh, you have Marty Turco, J.S. Steger, Milan Hayduk, Rick Nash, Marcus Nasland, Martin St. Louis, who is now the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, interestingly enough. And then the one outlier, Stanislav Chistov of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. So obviously those first six guys obviously had pretty decent careers and Chistov did not. So we certainly know the one that we want to avoid in this box break. Um, really any of the other guys you can't go wrong with. But personally, I would probably like to see either Jaguar or St. Louis um, early in my playing career back when I was probably like eight years old or something. Um, I wore number 26, partly because of Martin St. Louis. So that would be pretty cool. Um, and then, like I said, uh, you know, pretty much everything in the product has a refractor parallel. These are one thing that do not. Instead, they just have a gold autograph parallel. Those are all numbered out 25. So, um, you know, they still have a parallel version, but just not a refractor, so to speak, like everything else does. And then one last autograph card to note, there is a mini autograph card of J.S. Shiger as well, though I would probably assume those are pretty tough pulls. I don't think they're numbered and there's not odds for them, but just given that it's kind of like a one-off card, I would think that those are pretty tough to pull. So um, yeah, I think that pretty much does it for the intro. I think I touched on pretty much everything there is within the product. Um, hopefully everything that I just said about the product makes it clear as mud. Um, you know, like I said, I know it's a confusing product and it's unique and interesting and all that. So hopefully that introduced it well enough and, you know, you guys will understand it better once we get opening. Um, Aaron, I know you're here, um, kind of just watching with everyone else. Is there anything that, you know, you want to say about the product or any questions you have or anything that you want to make note of before I start opening? Well, one, like that was probably the, the longest product <laughs> intro we ever had, probably ever. I mean, just like just the detail on that was just unreal. So um, like, I'm excited to see it. Like the, the main thing for me is going to be like, uh, like just how the, the pack within a pack stuff works. I think just seeing that being opened is going to mm. be really cool. I'm not sure if you have that special camera set up like going on um, that you can kind of show us like, like, uh, like obviously live, but show us like your perspective of, uh, of what this would look like, like like going into the product. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be really, really cool. So that's what I'm excited about and just seeing all those sweet hits and hopefully some flurries, I think. Yeah, I mean. I'm hoping, I mean, last time I called a flurry, you know, you hit one. So, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. That's true. I mean, yeah, I guess it's good to go through my hopes and expectations too. I mean, obviously anything a flurry would be great. Um, as you guys saw, I already have his common card rainbow here. Um, so having like the big hit be one of those refractors that I already have. I mean, I can't complain about a second one, right? But it, it would kind of be nice to get somebody different um, or get either the uncommon or rare version. I, I would obviously love that. Um, but yeah, I would say just if there is a gold refractor in here for it to be a decent name, that would be great. Um, get a nice memorabilia card, that'd be great. Um, not getting Stanislav Chistov as the autograph would be great. <laughs> but yeah, I really don't have too many expectations just because, like I said, this is a product I've wanted to open for a long time. So, you know, just the fact that I'm actually able to open this is going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, you know, it, it's not even necessarily about the value with these cards or anything. It's just, they're so darn nice looking that even if they're not worth a lot, they're still great cards to have. So I'm excited about that. And like you said, I do have, I'll tilt the camera down here so you guys can see it. 
little bit better as I'm going through. Hopefully that looks okay. Looks good. All right. Hopefully I can keep everything on camera. So just to show the box a little bit, um, it kind of repeats some of this stuff here, the autograph, the relics, the uncirculated cards, all of that. Obviously, like I said, Jaguar is kind of, you know, prominent within the product, obviously he had won the Con Smythe in 2003. So he was prominently featured in a lot of 0304 products. Uh, this one, no exception. Um, just so you guys can see the rest of the box. They're really nice looking boxes, honestly. Um, then that kind of shows you all of the, the groupings for the memorabilia cards and autographs and everything. Um, yeah. I don't know how much you guys care about that, but in case you do, you can go back, watch this later and pause and read who's all and what. And I think that's, again, don't want to drag it on un unnecessarily. So I'm just going to rip right on into this sucker been looking forward to this for a long time this is kind of like the equivalent of like in a few years time like breaking into um uh 1314 panini uh national treasures just yeah. kind of like uh the company's last kick of the can at you know hawk product and seeing and seeing like what could they do so this product was obviously um just loaded with some big names, but also just very unique in how it was packaged and, and stuff like that. So super stoked, True. man. Good luck. True. Thank you. And Aaron, obviously, since you can communicate with me, if you notice that I'm way off camera or anything, please say something so I can fix that. Let's see here. Not making it easy to get into this bad boy. There we go. All right. So there we go. We've got the checklist here. You can see again if you want to pause and everything, or you can just go to like Beckett's website or something, see who all is in the product. And then again, the, the back has all of the inserts, all the different memorabilia cards, all that. Pretty cool. And then let's see. Okay, I was correct. So here we go. Here is the gold refractor pack. Nice. That's that's really cool. So it's like you know since, what you're gonna get. Like, like you don't know what player, but it's like here's something. It's like good luck. Yep. So since that is something that obviously is a big draw product for me too, I'm gonna save this until the very end. Um, just because I think this will probably be the nicest looking card in the break. So I'm going to set that aside and we will come back to that. Hopefully it's a good name like I alluded to. So here is the presentation of the box. Just one, one stack of packs. Pretty interesting. Take out one, you guys can take a look at it. Again, has J.S. Shiger on the pack. Show back. I know you can't see it super well. Um, I'll, I'll read through the, the odds just since it actually does list it. It wasn't listed anywhere on the box. So uh, sequentially numbered veteran refractor one in six, sequentially numbered uncommon rookie refractor one in six, sequentially numbered rare rookie refractor one in 18, sequentially numbered personal endorsement gold autographs. So those are the gold autographs numbered out of 25. Those are one in 176. And then the sequentially numbered popular demand refractors, uh, that, that's the Korea that I alluded to having earlier, group A, one in 62, group B, one in 624. So those are definitely a lot tougher. I would assume the group B is obviously the number out of 10. Um, sequentially numbered portions refractor relic, group A, one in 36, group B, one in 257. Sequentially numbered patches refractor one in 76. So that's actually not too bad. Um, popular demand relic group A one in 127, group B one in 12, group C one in five. Uh, the portions relic would be uh, group B one in 27, group C one in 27. Um, doesn't list a group A. Okay. Sequentially numbered patches relic one in 16. So those are, you know, I was saying the refractors and patches combined to roughly be, you know, 40% of the time. Uh, press plates, 
as they call them, the printing plates, one in 42. Um, and then going back to kind of the more common stuff, sequentially numbered rare rookies, uh, one in six, personal endorsement autographs, uh, so the autograph cards, group A, one in 11, group B, one in 26, group C, one in eight. So those are, you know, again, like I said, with the, um, with the memorabilia cards, the autographs also have those groupings. Um, I can't remember who all is group C, the most common one. I'm pretty sure Turco is in there. Um, I think Chistov is a group C, so hopefully I don't get him. Um, and then the mini autograph of J.S. Shiger, like I alluded to, um, to put a number on it, the odds for that one are one in 318 packs. So now we know. So um, those are the odds. As you guys can see, this is a pretty beefy pack, as you would kind of expect, given, you know, there's two other packs and cards and stuff inside. So we've been waiting long enough. Let's get cracking. I will do my best to keep everything on the camera so you guys can see everything as we open it. So I'll show you, I open up the first outer pack here and you can see inside that there is another pack and then one of those sealed uncirculated cards. So I'm gonna take out, I'll open this up a little bit more. Take out the second pack, take that here. And the first uncirculated card is a refractor, a veteran base refractor numbered out of 59 for the Boston Bruins, Glenn Murray. Good old Glenn Murray. Very cool card. Yeah, that's awesome. Beautiful card. And again, I know, you know, it's hard to see just how beautiful these cards are truly on a screen, but, you know, hopefully, I, mean, I know you guys can see the rainbow effect there and they're just beautiful cards. So yeah, regardless of if you get a good name or not, um, you got to appreciate every card that's coming out of this box for sure. So starting off with a Glenn Murray refractor card, and then here is the second pack. Um, it doesn't list anything special on the outside, just says Tops for Steam. So this will be the relic and then a pack that has the base and rookie cards within it. So here is the third pack. And we have got a pristine portions jersey card for the Carolina Hurricanes. But now for the Seattle Kraken, ever so slightly at the bottom, two colors, Ron Francis. Hey, that's not bad at all. That's really nice. So this is just one of the, Very cool. the basic versions. Again, really nice looking card. I don't know if you guys can see at the bottom there. Kind of hard to tell. There is the slightest little hint of red there. But yeah, very nice looking card for sure. And obviously... Ron Francis was a phenomenal hockey player and has gone on to have a, a really good career in the front office as well. So that's a cool card to start out with for the memorabilia cards. And then we've got our third pack here. Like I said, this will be the base and rookie cards. It's kind of funny. I almost wish that they did it kind of the other way around, like save the memorabilia for last or something. You know, ending with base cards is kind of boring, but <laughs> oh well. So let's see what we've got here. We're starting off with, I appreciate that one for sure. This was probably my first ever favorite player for the Chicago Blackhawks, Jocelyn Tebow. Hey, I know there's a lot of fans hitting up there. Yep. Very nice. Next up, oh, we have our autograph. Okay, right off the bat. And it is one that I was hoping for. So that is a win. We have a autograph and i know this is a, a rarer one i'm actually going to take a look at those odds again i'm pretty sure this guy is group a i apologize for the delay guys um trying to find it here um okay if he is group a they're not that bad it's only one in 11 packs but still this is like i said one of the guys that i was hoping to get it's a guy we've talked about multiple times before for the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, J.S. Shiger. That's a really nice card. <laughs> is it hard signed? 
Yep, they're hard. Nice, size. nice. Okay, that looks really nice. I've never seen that card before. Yeah, they are beautiful cards, and these yeah, really so nice. really give it kind of that tops chrome vibe I for sure. I dig. So yeah, very nice cards there, and I avoided cheese stops, so that's great. And got a player that I was hoping for, so even better. So moving on to the next card, we have our first rookie card. It's just a common one, numbered out of eleven ninety nine for the New Jersey Devils, David Hale. This is one I do need for my 0304 Master Collection. Um, forgot to mention that pretty much any of the rookie cards, um, just the basic versions, um, so that being the common out of 1199, the uncommon and the rare, um, I pretty much am going to need all of those. But just about everything else in the product that I open, um, I would probably listen to, you know, entertain an offer for moving them. So um, just keep that in mind. Next card, this is a good one for sure. Um, one of the better names you can get from the rookie, rookie crop in this product. Um, again, just a common rookie card numbered out of 1199 for the Washington Capitals, Alexander Semin. Nice. Especially, you know, like since you're chasing the set, it's kind of nice to break a box of that, you know, product and, and you know, like end up with a bunch of stuff from your set. That's really cool. Hmm. Yeah. I do have the complete base set already um, to just to make note of that. So that's why I'm really just going after the rookies here. But um, yeah, obviously any, any card that I need is, is just gravy for this. It's not why I'm opening the box, obviously. So um, yeah, but I mean, like I said, even just these base cards are just spectacular looking. So can't go wrong with anything in this box. Um, next base card for the New York Rangers, Brian Leach, obviously a, legendary defenseman for a long time with the New York Rangers. And then finally, for the Montreal Canadiens, con um, continuing that goaltender mojo for you, Aaron, Jose Theodore. Hey, Theo. Always liked him back in the day, especially yep. his ab days. Legend. So that is the first tri-pack. Now that you guys kind of understand how it works, I'll try to go a little bit quicker. Um, you know, just kind of try to speed this up, not drag it out too, too much, but obviously very interesting how this all works, you know, just not something that you see every day. Like I said, um, you know, and, and like I said, these packs are just massive. So on the pack number two, definitely happy about the Jagir autograph right off the bat. Let's see. Not to spoil. Okay. I'll take that. We sealed the second pack into the first pack here. So we've got our we've got our second pack here, and then our second uncirculated card. And again, pretty much all of these uncirculated cards are refractor cards, so just keep that in mind as well. Um, this is a common rookie refractor numbered out of 499. And I would definitely consider this to be one of the better rookie cards on the checklist. Um, definitely not the best, but definitely far better than a lot of them. Uh, a guy that I actually used to kind of collect back in the day, funny enough or not, and I had never had this card. So kind of cool to have it now for the Ottawa Senators. And he eventually went on to win a Stanley Cup with my Chicago Blackhawks, Antoine Vermette. So again, obviously the refractors are just stunning cards. They just look phenomenal. So that's a cool card to have for the collection. Probably will keep that one since I do like them. Put that aside. On to pack number two, which again, to remind you guys, has a memorabilia card as well as the third pack. Yeah, it's just so interesting to just open a pack and then immediately see another pack. All right, so we've got our pack here. And then our next memorabilia card. This is a nice one. It's one of the popular demand Jersey cards for the New Jersey Devils, Scott Niedermeyer. Good nice, that's sure. awesome. It would have been cool, like opening it up back, like when the product first released. Definitely would have been, 
very very solid for sure yeah oh yeah i mean obviously a, a legendary player as well and on to the third pack curious to see what that fourth mini pack will be like doesn't look like it's in here it seems like in these third packs they put the rookies in the middle which is kind of nice builds up some suspense a little bit so our first base card another guy i mentioned earlier is being a guy i liked for the tampa Bay lightning now head coach of the montreal canadians martin st louis very cool on to the next card we've got that's really pretty again just the base card but just beautiful for the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. And I remember when this guy got traded there and remember actually seeing him play and just, um, you know, if you guys remember him or ever saw him play, um, you know, this is probably one of the smoothest players in NHL history. Just amazing how efficient his movement was, um, you know, both his skating and his puck handling and movement. But, um, you know, you don't see him pictured with this team very often. For the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, Sergei Fedorov. Nice. That's Very cool. cool head. Yeah, cool card. It's always cool seeing, you know, those old Ducks jerseys too. Legend. Yeah. Yep. On to the first rookie card of the pack for the Colorado Avalanche. Um, again, a guy I would say who had a pretty solid career, um, especially in comparison to some guys on the checklist. Um, just a common one, number out of 1199, John Michael Lyles. Again, one I need for the set, so that's awesome. Then I can tell we've got a more limited one here. I don't know if it's uncommon or rare yet. <laughs> I was joking with someone about pulling a card of this guy earlier today. Um, it is a uncommon for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, it's one I need, so I can't complain too much, but this is probably the worst guy in the checklist, I would say. Um, again, for the Maple Leafs, Number out of 699, uncommon, Maxim Kondratiev. Who is that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm a Leafs fan. I have no idea who that is. Like, literally. I've never heard <laughs> that name in my life. Yeah. If you, were getting a, if you were getting an 0304 Leafs rookie, you were looking for Matt Stajan. But, yeah, Kondratiev was in pretty much everything that year as well. Um, I think he was fairly hyped up that year for whatever reason. So, yeah. Um, not the not the rare rookie that you want to get, but oh well. Still one that I need, like I said, so can't complain too much. Uh, next base card for the Los Angeles Kings, Alex Frolov. Love how that purple looks on there. And finally, for the Atlanta Thrashers, Amy Heatley, Mr. 50 and 07. Hey, 50 and 07. Taking a shot. No helmet. Love that. That's a cool card. So there is tri pack number two. On to tri pack number three. Aaron, what are your impressions so far of the first two packs? A lot of cool names. Uh, the cards look awesome. And it's so cool to see, you know, a pack within a pack. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, on to the third pack. We've got another common rookie refractor as the hit here's the second pack for the san jose sharks a guy that had a decent career but probably didn't quite live up to the hype that he had going into his rookie year uh, like i said for the san jose sharks refractor number out of, out of 4.99 at the time pricing <clears throat> this would be a really cool set to complete honestly even just if you got these rookies they're just such nice looking cards. I think that would be a cool little chase. I saw, I think on the Hobby Insider Facebook group, I think someone commented that they did the complete set of the refractors. If I remember correctly. Obviously, with the veterans being out of 59, that would actually kind of be somewhat difficult to do, especially now. So that would be cool if someone did accomplish that. This third pack or second pack, pardon, is giving me a little bit of trouble. Man, seeing all these cool cards, it makes me miss tops, right? You know, like I wasn't too deep in the hobby in 0304, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just miss tops like real badly. Like if only upper deck 
tops and whoever like wanted to produce cards, I think that would be amazing. You know, yeah. increased competition, you get cool cards like these. Uh, this like product reminds me of like a little bit of like OPG Platinum on steroids, mm -hmm. especially when you hit those refractors that, that tops is really known for. And mm -hmm. I think with like a modern tops spin on hockey would be amazing. Like I can only imagine like a, you know, tops super refractor or something that like one of one or something like mm -hmm. that of, of, you know, the superstars now would be just on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it would uh, bring a lot of baseball card collectors into hockey. And I just think the value of those would be unreal. Yeah. I didn't, um, I could be wrong on this, but didn't, um, I don't know if it was a super refractor, but a card just sold like some rookie of someone sold for like 500 grand. Oh, um, I'm sure. Yeah. Super and, refractors in baseball are a big Yeah. Deal. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, it mimicked the price of this cut in half uh, <laughs> Wagner rookie. And, and it's kind of funny. Cause like, like I saw a bunch of polls, like which one would you rather have? Mm -hmm. And um, surprisingly, some people did vote for this super refractor of some, uh, uh, you know this one rookie mm -hmm. and I mean to me it's like a no-brainer like I'd rather have the Wagner even if right. it is like literally cut in half um, <laughs> I have no idea like where they found this thing but uh, just unreal how much value those super factor has in in baseball and of course you know with tops being acquired and all that stuff you know those types of cards are going to be around for quite some time um, you know as we move along here in the hobby so uh, man I, I hope someday they get into hockey um i don't want to see upper deck go away or anything or anything like that I, like i want them to stay but increased competition i think would be really cool just for the health of the hobby but also just seeing like more cool cards right so we'll see but this tops break is just a cool reminder of that of what could have been but yeah anyway yeah, i go on to pack three <laughs> yeah no all good i i agree i mean i, I would love to see tops back one day and make cards like this um i think they still i don't know if they still are but i know at least somewhat recently they were still making tops pristine in baseball so yeah obviously if so. they ever ever did come so. back i would be all for them bringing tops pristine hockey back it'd be um, super nice and they yeah. also have those top stickers right now for hockey and they look mm -hmm. super nice like they're very collectible um you guys probably watching have a, have a few i'm sure and they're um they're awesome you know especially with their throwback stuff Yep. Anyway, on to the third memorabilia hit. It's a pristine portions game worn jersey card for the Montreal Canadiens, Saku Koivu. Nice. It's almost kind of interesting to the one one thing you don't really think of too much, um, you know, is wanting a white jersey piece. And I wouldn't say that I necessarily want a white jersey piece, but since the cards are so like chromed out, it actually pops off the card really nicely if it is a white jersey piece so you know obviously kind of in some way it makes you appreciate even a white jersey piece even just a little bit more so i don't mind white jersey pieces actually like like i always some people like just rag on it but like for me like every time i see someone do that i'm kind of like i mean i get it but also like a jersey card a jersey card you know mm -hmm. like like i i can only imagine back in you know the 90s you know when jersey cards like started to become a thing uh you know late before the year 2000 like no one would ever dare to to you know speak ill about a white jersey card because just mm -hmm. the idea was insane right True. and even in the, in the early 2000s so i still have that kind of mindset today like you know like i know value like like it might not be where it needs to be especially if you pull one but like i've always never really minded white jersey cards at all so i mean we should probably put a poll you know a poll <laughs> on twitter or, or something like that and see you know how many people really just dislike a white jersey piece versus people who don't actually mind it i might vote for that like i'll be the only person who doesn't mind <laughs> white jersey cards because honestly like it could be kind of refreshing and mm -hmm. maybe a little bit cheaper so yeah okay. so opening this third mini pack within this tri pack um i can tell it's probably extremely difficult to see but you can probably see there is a little gap in between the cards there that is the mini card pack. So what do you think, Aaron? Should I open the mini or should I save open it, it for later? Open, open it. it. Like I, I, I forgot right. that there was minis in these. I, I think I've probably seen one over the years, but just, yep. you know, pulled it out of my mind. But like seeing a mini will be really cool. Um, 
I might have seen one a long time ago. It's been a while since I've really searched them up, but definitely open it. And then save the refractor one for, yeah. for last, but definitely open that mini pack. Sounds good. Experience. So first base card here we've got for the Colorado Avalanche, David Abisher. Kind of a forgotten about goalie in a lot of ways, I feel like. I haven't forgotten about it. He's awesome. <laughs> Fair enough. You're a goalie nerd, but yeah, I feel like he was pretty hyped up. Um, you know, in light of Patrick Waugh's retirement, um, you know, they kind of hoped he would take them to the promised land and that never really worked out. And then he went over to Montreal and that kind of didn't really work out too well either, but that's how it goes. And then here is the mini pack. So um, it says, just says tops pristine, not intended to be sold as an individual pack, which is what the gold refractor pack said as well. So how many will, are these minis? Like, are um, they mini or like mini? It's kind of I guess we'll tell. see. I guess we'll see. I don't even know how to break into this because it's not like a normal pack. Like, it's just there's just like a perforation on there. So I don't even know how you're supposed to really open this without damaging the card. Maybe like friction, like trying like like pull it against each other and they might rip. Maybe there's a little bit of room up top, so I'm going to be really careful and cut into it. There is enough room where I know I'm not going to cut into the card, but it's still a little nerve wracking. <laughs> All right, let's see if that's enough to get into it here. This you might is... have the first tops uh, pristine mini rookie that's going to be like perfect condition because I could see a lot of people <laughs> just yeah messing that up and damaging the card. So I think we're witnessing the first 10 here. If you would agree with this thing. <laughs> it's funny. So I, I did I did get into it and I can already tell who the player is. We'll see if I get lucky or not. Obviously, if you're paying attention, you know what that means. So we will see. Oh, oh that's pretty awesome. Well, continuing the theme of this box from earlier, and yes, I did get extremely lucky. I don't know the print run of these, but my mini card is the J.S. Shiger autograph card. Yeah, and that's so cool. How <laughs> uh, small is that compared to like the regular cards? Like, you Good question. Like, like, comparison? Good like, compared question. to like a base card or something? Yep, yeah. let me grab the Abisher. They're close. They're not super small in comparison. So. Okay, so you see the Shiger there, and then you see the Abisher a little bit over top there. Not bad. That's so cool. Yeah, um, probably some sort of... Like, I don't want to say short printed, but you know, oh, yeah, like de definitely rare. Yeah, that's a rare, rare mm -hmm. pull for sure. And a nice card. Yeah, definitely. Should we should very happy. Reach out to that. a Jaguar collector. Um, I think there's one on Instagram and see if they would be interested in that or at least know, like, maybe some more information on that, how many times they've seen them, stuff like mm -hmm. that. That's really cool. That's Great awesome. card. Couldn't be happier about that. Yeah, I, as I looked into the pack, I could just see like, a that mask. like just his mask and i was like okay that's shagir i really hope it's the autograph card because <laughs> he just he does have just a, a normal mini card as well so that's solid. obviously getting that is awesome that like that makes the break right there honestly like that's I'd awesome keep that if you can't find like a you know a suitor oh yeah like I would yeah i don't that. i don't mind keeping that card for sure that's awesome Beauty, congrats um, back to the normal cards um, another rookie card that I do need for the set, and this is, again, a better name, uh, just a common one, numbered out of 1199, multi-time Stanley Cup champion with the Los Angeles Kings, Dustin Brown. Again, I love the purple. Looks awesome. Probably my favorite color, so that's always awesome. Same. On to the next card. We've got another more rare card here. It's an uncommon rookie which these are numbered out of 699 for, again, obviously one that I do need. Uh, for the Colorado Avalanche, Merrick Svatos. He obviously had a really good actual rookie season in 0506, kind of challenging Lechkin and Crosby for the Calder Trophy in a lot of ways. Um, so that's really cool. Probably a... Uh, a mid-range name on the checklist, I would say, but again, far better than, than some guys. Um, speaking of good names, 
this is definitely a really, really nice one to get. Aaron, if you want this card, let me know and it's yours. Um, I didn't mention earlier, I don't think, but I already have all 100 of the veteran base cards. So I don't need any of the veteran base cards. So if you want this one, it's yours. For the New Jersey Devils, and I'm sure you know who that is, Martin Brodeur. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. I don't have that in my Brodeur collection. So, I mean, why not? You know, like, like once we figure out our next shipment of things to kind of, uh, you know, go across the border, why not? I'll take a Brodeur base card, especially with uh, Tops Pristine. I got to look in my old binder from when I was a kid. I might have maybe a random base card from this product, but I, I doubt it. I'll take it. Why not? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice Over card. The side. That's, that's really nice. And finally, the last base card of the pack for the Detroit Red Wings, an all-time great goal scorer, Brett Hall. So solid. Nice card. Nice pack. Love that Jaguar Mini Auto. That's amazing. Love that. Are we on to the last pack? Nope. We have two more. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. This is this like is a, taken forever. Like a, it's like a well. They're just just yep. a never-ending well of hockey cards. Yep. I don't want you to have it like like sinking into the box but also the packs itself are like three thousand packs per pack it's insane <laughs> yeah it's not a quick break but it's a lot of fun so the next uncirculated card here uh just a common rookie refractor number about 499 um for the buffalo sabers uh much maligned enforcer andrew peters very cool Man, like as the hobby continues to kind of roll along here, it's going to be kind of cool to see, um, you know, how even more nostalgic products lazy like these are, you know, like with pack after pack and stuff like that, because it's kind of becoming not every product, but, you know, it's kind of becoming, you know, a one pack kind of thing mm -hmm. <laughs> with products. Yep. And then this is kind of like the complete opposite, like not as much packs as you can get, but just pack yeah. after pack of stuff um not quite like an opg or something or series one or two but it's just something where i think one of these days you know i'm gonna miss multiple pack products you know i don't want to say mm -hmm. that but but i think maybe you know like 10 or 20 years who knows what's gonna look like or maybe you know the flagship products you know become popular again and and, and there's uh you know a reason to keep those around we'll see you know we'll see we're kind of seeing the um, not fully across the board, but we're kind of seeing like, um, you know, autographs and memorabilia were, were a big thing for a long time. And now we're kind of seeing like a change of, the, uh, you know, of the tide a little bit where um, like autographs and memorabilia are, are cool. Don't get me wrong if they're, you know, crazy high end sets for sure. But we're seeing kind of like, um, as far as like the low end stuff, you know, the, the, um, the return of like parallels being cool again. And I mm -hmm. really enjoy that. So maybe this is, you know, a shift where, where base and base parallel cards, like kind of make a return a little bit. Um, and autographs or memorabilia cards just for the sake of it might be, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, skimmed down a little bit, but maybe it's a short-term thing, who knows, but yeah. seeing products like these pack after pack, especially in such a unique format is so cool. And I see you have a Jersey card there. So yes, I do. <laughs> Um, a guy that we have talked about earlier tonight already from the popular demand jersey set. Um, like I said, I already talked about him. Montreal Canadiens goaltender Jose Theodore. Continuing the goalie mojo. Nice. I, I remember I um, like there was this one highlight on like sports and I'm not sure if you guys remember it, but he did this like behind the back, like blocker save. Like, like it was the puck was like almost like right on the line. And then he just did mm -hmm. this thing where he kind of looked back, saw it, and just kind of like reached back and kind of twisted it around with his blocker and got it with his with his like stick and blocker kind of hit both or something like that. Just like as soon as I like see a Theo card, I'm just like, man, like that saves really cool. I don't know, yeah. like that's kind of like where my mind goes when I see certain you know goalies. It's just, it just goes back to that one save or that one game or something. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely a you know a nice southpaw legend for sure in the goalie community. True. And um, nice it's really hard to see. I don't think you guys can see it on camera, but right up here, just like in the background of the design is kind of like a ghost like image oh, yeah. of I the player it. too. It's probably oh, no, hard not to see. a ghost image. I see a little yeah. sparkly thing. Yeah. But... It's like right here. 
That's really in this corner, but yeah, you can't can't really see it on camera too too well. But, and you'll get a picture yeah. afterwards or something. It's really cool yeah. either way. Yeah, really, really cool. carefully designed project for sure. With the yep. designs, with the technology used on the card, um, so cool. Especially with you know like what was going on at the time. Like this was definitely mm -hmm. like you know a step above for sure. Even today, like they hold up well as far as like a design perspective. Like you look at these cards and you're like, whoa, like there's something about those cards, you know, like even in 2022. Yeah, Super cool. yeah, no doubt. All right, on to the quote unquote boring base cards, um, which obviously are anything but. Uh, I appreciate this one, obviously kind of had a mediocre career, um, had a few good years in Chicago with the Blackhawks as he's pictured here. Um, a guy that I remember fondly growing up being a Hawks fan, uh, in my youth, uh, being Kyle Calder. Pretty sure I actually met him once in an autograph signing, if I remember correctly. But cool card. On to the second base card. A guy who had a very long and successful playing career, won a Stanley Cup with the Pittsburgh Penguins at the end of his career, um, has gone on to be a pretty good um, executive in the NHL now. Um, with the Minnesota Wild currently, and uh, pictured here with the Dallas Stars, Bill Guerin. Love those old Stars jerseys. Aren't they making a comeback next year, I think? They, I, I want to see. I know, see I know they, 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 they are, did but... kind of like a, a spinoff of them for the reverse retros last mm. year, but they totally butchered those. There was way yeah. too much white on them. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I, like, I want to see, like, I saw a picture of one. I, it could have been, like, a, a mock-up, but those they, are so cool they wore them, able to make a comeback they wore them a few weeks ago um in warm-ups for nice. sergey zubov's jersey retirement oh that's probably what i saw it for still cool yep. Yep. Uh, like i just think of uh like ed balfour back in the day yep. you know when i see those jerseys um it's kind of cool seeing those jerseys like go away because they're not cool anymore and then years later being like oh you know actually those were kind of cool let's bring them all back like True. come on guys like stick with them i don't know very true. No, I, I know what you mean. Um, onto the first rookie card. It's a common numbered out of 1199 for the Montreal Canadiens, Chris Higgins. Just kind of a meh one there. Like he had a decent playing career, but nothing spectacular. Uh, next rookie card, a common numbered out of 1199. Another guy that we referenced earlier. Uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, thankfully, it is not Maxim Kondratiev again. Instead, it is Matt Stajan. It's a guy you want. Good career. Pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Yep. Played for quite a while. Leafs and Calgary Flames, most notably. I have a game you stick in his, actually. Nice. Got it years ago at the ACC. Nice. On to the next base card um, for the Atlanta Thrashers goaltender, Passy Nermanen. Man, I remember him. <laughs> I love his gear. Yeah, old Thrasher stuff. Very cool. <laughs> the pads matched with the logo. Very nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those old uh, Vaughn pads were uh, legendary. I think those were the Vaughn Velocity ones, I think. Those are so cool. Yeah. Very cool card. And finally, the last base card for the San Jose Sharks, Kyle McLaren. Kind of a, a little bit of a forgotten about defenseman. He was a a pretty good puck mover and kind of had some injury issues that kind of cut him short a little bit, but he was a pretty good player nonetheless, especially around this time for sure. So we are on to the fifth and final pack. Empty And box. then we have the retro or not the retro, the factor pack after True, this. the gold refractor pack is still. And those would be out of 33. True. So that's going to be cool. Good luck on the final pack. On to the final pack, and I can tell we have a rookie refractor because it's a different design. I believe I know who it is. I think there's only one guy from this team in the set. I believe it's a guy we got a card of earlier that I will confirm momentarily. So here's the second pack. And then the, yep, it is the guy I thought, which I don't mind at all. Ooh, a nice. It's a rare rookie refractor. So this is the rarest refractors you can get for rookies. That's a beautiful card. For the Washington Capitals, Alexander Semen. 
oh man, I thought that was Ovechkin for a second, but I'm like, <laughs> wait, it's not the same year, but it looks like Ovechkin, you know, the old jerseys. Yeah. Um, that's cool. That's great. Well, if this, if this was Ovechkin, that'd be like a multi-thousand oh, dollar card. Yeah. Especially right now. <laughs> It'd be insane. And these boxes <laughs> would have cost far more than they did. Oh, that's true. But great that's card. a really nice card. Numbered out of 59. we will show the back there. Very cool. Man, I miss soaps. So very cool. That's a really nice looking card. I don't think I've ever had one of these rare cards before, actually. So cool to see the design in person. Obviously, a refractor of a pretty good player is a really nice bonus. So I will gladly take that. On to the last memorabilia pack. Let's hope it's a pristine patches. I'm not going to hold my breath. Even if it's just a stick card, it looks a little bit thicker. So I'll hope for the best here. Hmm. Okay, it is a pristine patch. I'll come back to that. Obviously, here's the last third pack here. Let's hope it's a nice patch. Ah, it's kind of boring, unfortunately. <laughs> but still, it's a pristine patch nonetheless for the San Jose Sharks. Pretty much, I would say, one of like the quote unquote original Germans in the NHL. Marco Sturm. Nice. There's a big collectors out there. That's awesome. So cool just patch in, window too. Like I like the, yeah, uh, the early 2000s cut. patch window. I, like I kind of liked how, um, you know, they had unique patch windows or like, even if it was like a square, you know, just a small window with an awesome patch just made it that much cooler. Um, I kind of mm. wish they did a little bit more of that today, but like now it's all about the mega patches and stuff, which is cool. But like maybe if they limited a little bit more, and have these smaller, you know, patch or jersey windows would be kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe so, I'm just like an old man just, just yelling at clouds here, but you are. I don't know. I kind of, yeah. I am, but like I kind of miss those small windows. It made yeah. the patch that much more like cool and it left more for the design of the card, but true. Maybe that's just me. True. No, you're right. Unfortunately, it is just all black. It kind of has like a, I don't know, like a little bit of a, not like a snag, but almost just kind of like a, maybe like a stick brushed against it. So the, some of the threads are just like a little different, but hey, got a pristine patch, so can't complain. Um, it's not serial numbered, which is interesting because I thought they were numbered out of 50. So maybe they just have a print run of 50 and aren't actually serial numbered, but regardless, did get a pristine patch like I was hoping for. So can't complain there. On to the final pack of base and cards. Let's hope for some flurry or Bergeron here. That would be a great way to finish this off here. Let's see. Oh, it looks like I got a bonus hit. Okay. First base card, we got Patrick Marlowe. Legend. <laughs> Legend indeed. And then we got a second autograph card of, <laughs> this is the box that keeps on giving. I love it. So I mentioned how I wanted autograph cards of two guys. I've already gotten one of those guys twice, and I just got the other. Your head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, Martin St. Louis. That's awesome. That's so cool. I, I love how it's part of the same set too. So it's like, you know, you put them side by side and they just match perfectly. Same Louis, that's awesome. Yep. That's can't very, ask, very cool. Can't ask for anything more from the There's autographs. There's also a big Saint Louis collector out there. I think he's in the groups and Jill, I'm, I'm sure he can give you a little bit more oh, info yeah. about that card. You know, how many he's seen. Yep. How many he's the, these ones aren't super uncommon. You see them, you see them enough. So cool. Um, but yeah, Brian Jankowski, I know you're out there. Give you a shout out. That's his name. There's, there's your guy, Marty St. Louis. Brian was uh, one of the guys I got a card at the National for. It was that Marty St. Louis in the game used jumbo glove card. Right, so, right. Maybe some Haps fans will be interested in that. Uh, like I could definitely yeah, see true. a couple true. side collections, you know, emerging from, you know, his recent, you know, like coaching position. So true. You never know. Yeah. Just an awesome looking card. I love how these look all chromed out and everything. Just beautiful. Yeah, I like the black and white. It's really cool. 
and yep. the chrome effect. Yep. Nice. And of course, the blue goes well with it being Tampa Bay as well. So that's cool. Nice little added bonus. But that's awesome. Great way to finish the hits. On to the first rookie of the pack. Already got a card of this guy. Uh, it's a common version this time, numbered out of 1199 for Colorado Avalanche, Merrick Svatos. Again, one that I need for my set, so I'll take it. Here's our last chance at a rookie card, so let's hope it's Bergeron or Fleury, and it's not, unfortunately. That's okay. It's a rare rookie, though, so I will gladly take that, because that's definitely one I need for my set. Numbered out of 199, um, a guy that definitely had a, a decent career. Um, for the Nashville Predators, Dan, Dan Ham Hughes. Name, I know you're watching, and I know you were hoping that was going to be Jordan Tutu, but it's Ham Hughes, oh well. <laughs> but cool card nonetheless. Funny how earlier in this pack I mentioned how I've never had a rare card, and now I have two. So that's kind of kind of cool. Nice looking card. And the final two base cards. For the St. Louis Blues, Pavel Dimitra. Rest in peace, Pavel. And the final base card for the Phoenix Coyotes, who are going to be playing in a, whatever, 4,000-seat arena here pretty soon. That's hilarious. Uh, Damon That's so funny. Pal. I saw a picture today. Um, someone, I guess one of the staff there, something. Uh, <clears throat> I think it was on Instagram or something like post a picture of what, you know, the, the nosebleed section looks like from that arena. Yeah. And it's in the final row and it's like, you get this amazing view. Yeah. So no matter where you're seated in this arena, obviously with it being so small, um, the views are going to be amazing. I'm sure that's going to be great to grow the game. I mean, I can only imagine, um, you know, like all the students like, oh, yeah. like going to games and it's going to be so cool. It's going to be interesting though with the, with the seating. Um, like originally it's like five five thousand but mm -hmm. i heard with like all the renovations or you know like maybe outfitting it you know with cameras and stuff it's only gonna fit like 3500 people yeah so we'll see like maybe they add in some stuff and it does fit five thousand but it might be even less than that um so that's gonna be so cool to see so yeah. I mean, good on those guys. I mean, it's kind of weird, like, having an NHL team do that. But, you know, it's cool that they're keeping the team there. Like, I know a lot of people might want them to move to Quebec, you know, like, as would I. But, you know, I think just for the growth of the game, I think that's a market. Like, I was reading about them today, actually. You know, that's a market that is important, you know, with the demographic there and stuff to grow the hockey. So it's important the team stays there. Um, maybe they can have, like, a best of both worlds, like, have Arizona, but also have a Quebec team one day. But. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see them play such a small arena. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Yeah, for sure. So that does it for the final, you know, normal pack. And then, of course, we got to go back to this bad boy, the gold refractor. Yeah, open pack. it up. Let's see that flurry out of 33. <laughs> so those are the ones with the ridges, right? Yeah. So I'll grab it real quick. Or Birch and Yep. So here's so cool. my flurry gold refractor. You can tell a little bit on the edges, just kind of like a jagged edge all the way around. Probably cut something um, with that. Cut the, some bread or something. <laughs> the uh, veteran base cards just have a kind of like a saw-like die cut on the top edge, and then the other three edges are all just normal. Um, so just the rookie cards are all the way around. Um, and then the veterans are a much more pronounced, like larger die cut. So we'll see what we get. I'm just hoping for a good name. If it's a great name, that's an added bonus. Even like a good veteran would be. Yeah. Sweet. Like a bro doer, Mario Lemieux, anybody like that. But here we go. I can tell who it is. It's not bad. It's a veteran. So it's one of those with the larger jagged edge. I'm gonna try to take as good a care of this as possible here. It's numbered out of 33, of course. Number 21 out of 33, the Ottawa Senators, Daniel Alfredson. Hey, that's a great name. That's awesome. Oh, man, that's really sweet. That's so cool. Yeah, definitely a sweetest legend right there. That's awesome. That's right. Very good pull. 
I mean, it's better than a lot of others for sure. That's true. Especially yeah. like pulling it back in 0304 would be like, would be like, be like, like, all right. I'm a Leafs fan, but I'm like, like mad respect on that. So, man, Alfie, I miss him. Very yeah. cool card. Congrats on that. Cool. I'm not sure if you'll keep their break, but very cool. And here's the serial number. So nice. like I said, obviously much larger die cut on the top edge there. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. I know at the national, um, when I met up with Jeremy Lee, our good buddy, um, he had acquired three of these cards. I, I forget who all they were. I want to say it was Bro Dewar, Yager. Oh, maybe I don't know if it was Belfour. I don't remember. But no, it was Hashik. Hashik. I think it was Hashik, Bro Dewar, and Yager of these three these uh gold refractor cards so yeah they're beautiful cards um i doubt that alfredson goes for a ton of money but um again like i said opening this was in no way shape or form about the money or you know the value that i would get out of this box um it was just about the experience of finally getting to open this stuff you know sharing that with you guys documenting this product how it kind of worked what it looks like all that so um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's too much else to say. Obviously I was thrilled with the autographs I got, um, getting the, uh, Jaguar normal autograph, the Jaguar mini autograph, the St. Louis autograph there at the end. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would say honestly, the Jaguar mini is probably my favorite card out of the box. Like that was just very unexpected. So I was very happy about that for sure. Um, yeah, lots of cool stuff. I mean, just to, that was obviously a very fun box break. I mean, just very unique. You're pretty much never going to see it again. Um, I shouldn't say that because I'll open another box actually later on the show. Um, you guys probably remember the episode uh, where I opened a box with my buddy Tyler. Um, I told him, you know, I've kept him in the loop about getting these boxes and everything and um, told him that we'll break one together at some point down the road. So stay tuned for another box break of this stuff at some point. I don't know when that may or may not be. Don't really have any plans for that, but um, we will crack into that at some point down the road. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know um, how much more else there is to say here. Obviously a lot of just phenomenal looking cards. Again, seeing them on screen just does not do them justice. I mean, these are just stunning cards, every single one of them. Um, so yeah, I think I've probably shared everything I have to share. Aaron, is, is there anything, uh, you want to say in reflection of the box break? You know, if there's a, a few cards that stuck out or a, an insert set that stuck out or just more about the, the actual breaking experience or, or anything else? Um, I think this whole experience just makes me want to just, just burst into tears. The tops isn't around anymore. Um, just amazing product. Super cool how it's like uh, built you know i think um uh when we had billy on like like it'd be interesting to find his thoughts about it i mean different company obviously but how hard it would be to build you know a fair product like knowing that all these packs are within these packs and they have uh, certain things in them like mm -hmm. but also the, the order has to be built a certain way so um that's just so cool you know that that whole thing and the cards you hit were awesome um like definitely a lot of cool names i haven't heard in a while and i think the favorite card of me is that Jaguar. um mm -hmm. i mean i've always been a fan of like mini cards so um like just that right there and obviously being autographed is is just next level and Jaguar just you know really amazing career and just um to get a card of his uh you know especially when he's featured on the box is definitely a very very cool uh you know moment for sure so um yeah just awesome just definitely a big milestone as far as box breaking goes and uh thanks for everyone for tuning in just you know thanks a bunch yeah no doubt i'm gonna shine my flashlight on these just to see if that gives a little bit more a little perspective bit. on how nice these are not too much i did bring in a, a lamp here to help with the lighting which helped a ton i'm actually not in my normal I usually record in my office, but I'm actually in our dining room right now just because I have a little bit more of a spread out space here to put stuff and everything. Um, one thing I just wanted to note that I was just noticing as you were talking, Aaron, um, I was just looking at the checklist sheet and it looks like they actually maybe fairly late in the process 
changed the checklist for the autograph cards because, you know, like I said, I listed the guys that are on the checklist according to Beckett, which I would like to think that this far after the product being released is probably correct. Um, you know, and I know I've seen cards of all of those guys before, but on the checklist that was in the box, it does have seven autographs listed, but two of them are actually different. So they do not have Chistov listed and they do not have Marty St. Louis listed, interestingly enough. Um, and they do have Marion Gabrick and Henrik Zetterberg both listed. So that's just kind of a, an interesting little fact there. You can see them right up here, but just kind of interesting. Wonder, wonder what happened there. I don't know if they didn't return their cards or, or what happened. So I mean, they got backdoored somewhere and they're just super rare. <laughs> yeah. And, and we'll find 300 of them on eBay one day. <laughs> yeah. You never know. You never know. I mean, I've, I've seen that happen in the past, actually. Um, there was a flurry, a uh, dual signature with, I want to say Talbot. And Talbot actually kept the cards and then he would give them away when a fan would, you know, would write to him. Jeez. And so, it, but this was years later, though, like 10 years after the fact, or, or maybe not wow. that long. But yeah, like definitely a good number of years later, he started giving them out, uh, you know, as soon as a fan would would write to him and stuff and he would return them with, you know, signed base cards or something like that. So uh, mm -hmm. he, he got this dual autograph before he had signed it. And then he signed them all, all 50 of them. And then he just kept them. You know, he thought that was cool and he just kept them. Uh, <laughs> and then eventually he did, he did eventually circulate, probably not all 50, like, like I would guess he probably kept, you know, a few for himself. But yeah, so that card is... Um, is pretty cool like i know kendall picked one up years ago years ago so you never know when cards are going to circulate right so who knows that's true that's true should check in the box maybe there's a hundred of them in the bottom no definitely not um, a hidden panel <laughs> another pack that has a pack of each of those guys inside of it um that would be funny um yeah anyway i don't think there's too much more to say here um i hope you guys enjoy this i know i sure did um, you know, like I said, this has been something I've been hoping could happen for years. So the fact that it finally did, um, just a, just a thrill to be able to open this stuff and, um, just be able to hold so many of these cards in your hands and, and just enjoy how pretty they really are. I mean, even like I said, the simplest of base cards are just absolutely beautiful cards. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, I know Aaron, you were looking forward to this one as well and just kind of seeing what it would be like. And, um, yeah, like I said, there will be another one coming at some point down the road. Don't know how soon, but, um, probably not super soon. Probably want to try to spread them out a little bit, but, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for episode 54, unless there's anything else that you would want to add, Aaron. I'm good. You know, I think it was a really cool break and um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if you break any more of the box you have. Yep. Yeah. So like I said, I do have now four more um, having broken this one. Um, my initial plan um, was to open this one tonight, obviously, and then one with Tyler and then probably sell the remaining three. Um, just kind of figure that's probably what makes the most sense financially. Um, obviously as much fun as it would be to open all of them. I don't know that that's necessarily the wisest thing to do. Um, one thing that I've been thinking about earlier today, actually, and if you guys are listening right now and are interested in this, please let me know. Cause if I get enough interest in it, I would certainly consider doing it. But if there is enough interest, I would definitely consider hosting a group break of a box. Um, you know, obviously I think you guys can see how awesome this stuff is and can see the value you know, in the cards and everything. Um, if we were to do that, I would even include the base cards just because there's not a whole lot within the box. So I'd want you guys to be getting as much as you can. Um, you know, and obviously, like we said, the base cards themselves are beautiful cards nonetheless. So uh, yeah, I mean, if, if that's something you guys would be interested in. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is giving out, guys. <clears throat> um. Yeah, if that's something you guys would be interested in, definitely let me know. And uh, we'll see. I mean, who, who knows? Um, 
my guesses for one box, I would probably just want to do like a team random just to keep it as fair to everybody as possible. Um, you know, obviously Pittsburgh and Boston would be the big teams in a team select and it would be hard to kind of figure out the pricing per team. And then I'm sure it'd be harder to sell some teams. So probably just doing a team random break would probably be what makes the most sense. Um, we obviously have to figure out pricing and logistics of shipping some of the uncirculated cards, depending on your location and everything. But my guess, just a quick rough guess, my guess is it would probably be like 20, 25 US per spot. Um, and I was just thinking about that earlier this afternoon as I was preparing for the episode. So if that is something you guys would be interested in, doing a group break of this stuff, let me know. Um, if there is enough serious interest, I would definitely consider doing it. Um, I think that would be a really fun thing to do. It wouldn't necessarily be for the podcast or anything, wouldn't be its own episode or anything, but um, just a fun little thing to do if you guys are interested. So yeah, definitely let me know if you are. Um, yeah, I think that'll, that'll wrap it up for episode 54. Um, you know, definitely, I think one of my favorite episodes that we've done so far, um, you know, definitely one of the more unique ones. Um, obviously, we've had a lot of unique episodes over the last couple of years, but um, this is just one that, you know, you're not going to see every day. So definitely a fun one for me and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And with that, please be sure to follow us on social media. We can be found right here on Facebook, of course, Instagram and YouTube at Center Ice Cardcast and on Twitter at Center Ice CC. Please also be sure to subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice to make sure you never miss a future episode. Until next time on Center Ice Cardcast, keep collecting those hockey cards.